uh, the New Testament contains four seemingly, I say, I say seemingly because I don't want to prejudge the issue, four uh, biographies, uh, perceived to be biographies of Jesus, the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, which are traditionally assumed uh, in the church for most of the last 2,000 years to be by actual disciples or friends of the apostles. So Matthew, the Gospel of Matthew was assumed to be by the actual tax collector uh, who was a disciple of Jesus, of course. Uh, Luke, uh, perhaps a companion of Paul and uh, Mark, um, not quite sure who he was, but nevertheless, perhaps close to, closely associated with the apostle Peter. So he's drawing on eyewitness accounts, apparently. And above all, John, the Gospel of John, uh, is considered to be uh, traditionally by the apostle John himself. And it will come as a surprise to um, readers uh, that, in fact, that's not been uh, understood to be the historical facts at all for biblical scholars for over a century or, or more. And uh, this is quite a surprise, I think, for many readers and listeners. I think it is. Um, people do tend to assume that the four evangelists, we call them, are, are apostles. Um, mm. Even though in the case of Mark, for example, you know, he's not in the list of the 12 apostles in the, in the Gospels, not even the Gospel of Mark. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, there, there's therefore no claim being made that he was an apostle. The other thing is that the titles of the Gospels only start to appear in the second century. But we, we have texts and manuscripts of them, but they're only identified as according to Matthew, according to Mark, according to Luke and so on, from the second century onwards. So it's someone guessing who they might have been by, rather than there being a really solid tradition going back to the apostles themselves. And it, it's generally agreed by most people who've studied the matter that the Gospels aren't any earlier than about 70 AD. So they're therefore 20 or 30 years later than the letters of St. Paul, for example, which mm. are kind of a surprise to people. So these are not I these, these gospels they're not eye written by eyewitnesses. Just want eye to no. they are, and, I think you use the word biography, and I think one can call them biographies of Jesus. Um and and Luke begins his gospel saying, you know, there have been lots of accounts of the life of Jesus, and I've considered them all, and this is my distillation of them, mm -hmm. which implies a reasonable time gap since yeah. the days of Jesus himself. True, true. But what's also um, uh, perhaps a surprise to, to many people in reading this book is that uh, it's very widely accepted amongst historians, specialists, New Testament scholars, that some of the Gospels um, actually copy from uh, another Gospel. So just to give the standard uh, scenario, mm -hmm. uh, that the Gospel of Matthew and Luke uh, used the Gospel of Mark uh, in the writing of their own Gospel, Plus, they used other material commonly called Q and uh, Quell in German, which I'm not going to go into, perhaps. But because I'm not, my point is this, that what I found interesting is that Matthew and Luke not only used Mark, but they edited it, they redacted it, they changed mm. it. And in some cases, I, I, I would think, uh, corrected it. So Matthew arguably could correct Mark, particularly on uh, the law, for example, Torah observance, Maybe Luke had a different view of Mark on whether or not Jesus' death was as a, um, a, a substitutionary uh, sin offering as a um, on the cross. So he deletes certain uh, verses in Mark ten forty five, and so on and so on. And and not only that, but you say and you, you put it very interestingly that in a sense Matthew and Luke in editing and updating, upgrading, whatever the word is, Mark, intended that their Gospels should be the ones that are read, not Mark. They, they wanted, in a sense, the Christian community to leave behind Mark and read their newer, fuller, corrected version. Mm -hmm. So, the, the, And yet today, Matthew, Mark and Luke are together as equals, I suppose, in the New Testament. And, I'm, and, and that perhaps would not have been what they would have wanted, if, yes. if I'm praising you. Yeah, yes, you 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 got exactly what I say. Um, I mean, I've I've got no proof that Matthew was trying to replace Mark, except the fact that it is clearly a second edition of Mark. Yes, with with, with new more material in it, and I can't see how you would do that if you didn't want it to become the standard mm. gospel. 
Um, and quite early on in the church, the existence of four gospels which don't tell identically the same story was felt to be a problem and people started to harmonize them. Mm. Uh, and we have this document called the Diatessaron, which is a kind of um, amalgam of all four gospels. And in some of the churches in Syria, that went on being used even down to the fifth century mm. instead of the individual gospels. And then a bishop there decided to say, no, you mustn't do it, you must read the four gospels even though they conflict with each other in some ways. So yes. it was felt that there was a tension about it. Yes, but I think, the Gospels, I think that Matthew and Luke were intended as a replacement for Mark. Mm. Mm. And Luke perhaps as a replacement for Matthew. 